and stars. Today, we are going to take our Duvia roach colony and we are going to move it to a new container. We're also going to get all of the babies out. So about two months ago, we learned all about creepy crawlers. We talked about superworms and some dubia roaches. I'll talk about superworms in another video because we are starting a superworm colony as well. Um, but we today we're going to take all of these babies that our families have had and we're gonna put them in another container so that we can gut load them and we can feed them to our bearded dragon. So we're going to start, you'll need three containers, your original container, and then two more empty containers in order to do this process. So I'm going to take out each one of the egg crates because we know that the roaches like to hang out inside the egg crates. They like it where it's dark, we know that normally we use a dark container, but because I am an educator and we're doing this in my classroom, we use a clear container so that I can pull it out and show the kids without disturbing the roaches. Um, but we do keep them in a dark closet so they do have that darkness. Um, and they use all of these little egg crates as little rooms and little homes. So it's like a little apartment complex or condo. So we're going to take the condos out and we're going to try to get as many of the roaches off as possible into a clean container. And then I'm going to place these egg crates because they're not really old. Um, we can reuse them and we always know we want to do the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle whenever we can. So I'm going to put those in a different container that our adult roaches are going to go into. So we're cleaning this container, we're making a new container with all of the roaches, then we're going to separate the adults out into their brand new container so that we can keep all of the younger roaches and um, gut load them so that we can have some food for our fish and for our bearded dragons and for our other reptiles like our turtles and sea salmon stars. So I'm gonna take these one at a time. I'm not using gloves today, but I will definitely be washing my hands afterwards. If you look on this side, you can see that all of these roaches like to hang out. And you can see that we have lots of babies in there as well as the adults all crawling around um, that you can see on our egg crates. Remember, they really like those egg crates. So I'm going to just knock them off of their egg crate container. So try to get them all off. These babies on this side. Oh, there's some more babies hanging out. I'm sure I try to get all of those off. And then I'm going to put my egg crate into another container and I'm just gonna put them um, vertically like they were in the old container. I also added some cardboard between my pieces of um, egg crate, and that's just so the egg crate doesn't smush together. It gives them some space to crawl around. So when you set up your Dubia colony, that's always a good thing to do is to put that little piece of cardboard in between each layer so that your roaches will have some space to crawl around. Another great tip that I have learned is, do you see these little crevices right here? It's good to have those facing down so that the roaches can crawl under those as well. So I'm gonna take our nice full egg crate here. And you'll see there are some medium sized ones like this guy. These are um, more little when I first put them so when I put my adult roaches in, I also put some little ones in, some feeders that I have, so that when my breeders die off, then they will be replaced with those feeders. So I'm gonna make sure my little crevices go down. And then I'm going to get my little piece of cardboard that was between. And it has some crawlers on it too. I'm gonna put that in between. And I'm going to get, I know 
another egg crate. Now I cut these egg crates a little bit smaller um, because my container's not quite as wide as some of them. So I cut it a little bit smaller so that um, I would have room to get the food bowl in and out and clean it and make sure that it's nice and clean for my roaches. And then I'm gonna put that in there one by one. This one doesn't have as many on it. I'll get those guys off. That one in. Get my cardboard. Just continuing the process. Getting the rest of these guys off. My little cardboard has a an adult male you can tell the difference between the adult males and the adult females because the males have those long wings the females have wings but they're teeny tiny you can't really see them that well and the females are a lot more shiny too put my cardboard between and then my last one Let's see if i can see a female do you see these shiny ones these little tiny things here are the wings on those so this this one has several females and then here are the males with those long wings all of those off we started our colony with um, about 20 females and i actually got a starter set from a company and they sent me 20 females and 10 males and after doing some research i found out that um, that's not a good ratio you're actually supposed to have one to two males per five females so I ended up buying about 10 more females and throwing those in there as well. Um, a couple of my males did die, so then my ratios were correct. Um, and as you can see, they are breeding successfully. We have a lot of little babies crawling around in there. Um, I have some smaller egg crates that I put. You can see there was a lot of babies there because that's right by the food bowl. Um, but I put these smaller egg crates in because put those by the food bowl and it's easy to help the babies crawl inside that food bowl. Now the babies will eat the um, the roach poop and that's actually called frass and so it's not good to clean it all the time even though it's kind of gross looking. They will eat that and survive off of it and then they'll eat the food that you put in as well. So we don't want to clean it too often and I'm actually going to take some of my frass and put it in my clean container, which sounds kind of gross, but um, because of the research that I've done, that's good for them. So we're going to do that. I'm going to get the rest of these babies off. I'm going to put all the little ones in here. Oops. Getting the wrong one. All right, and then this is the food bowl that I have. I got it from the Dollar Tree for a dollar. Um, and it's been working out pretty well for me. Just because it's flat, you'll notice that I have some, um, some masking tape going around the side. And that's to make it easier for the babies to crawl up. They can't crawl up smooth surfaces, and these smart surfaces are smooth. Um, so you can either use sandpaper and sand it down or masking tape. The masking tape's kind of getting gross. So I think I'll take it off and use the sandpaper. Um, a lot of this is just trial and error. What works best for you? What's more convenient for you? Um, the food that I had in here, I had a, a couple of um, potatoes. I had some carrots. You can see those. Um, for the breeders, they suggest that you use citrus fruit or oranges. So that's what we're gonna put in there um, this time. I knew I was going to be doing this, so I didn't put oranges this time for them to feed because my bearded dragon that I'm gonna be feeding it to, it's not good for him to eat things that had citrus. It's bad for their bellies. So we are going to um, gut load these with other things that the bearded dragon does eat, like greens and squash and bell peppers and things like that. Um, before we feed him. And I just kind of wanted to start that process so I didn't put any, that's why you don't see any citrus here. So, 
Finishing up here, I do see that there are a couple of dead roaches in here, so we definitely don't want those in um, our new container. But we do need to get all of these roaches into here, or into our new container, the adult ones and then the baby ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my egg crates, and I'm gonna put it in here, a couple of my egg crates, because we know they like to hide in these egg crates. So I'll come back later, and most of these roaches will have crawled up into the egg crates, and then I can do this process with those. Um, I'm gonna leave this yucky food bowl in there because I'm gonna make a nice new one. I'm gonna put this over to the side. I'll come back to that later. So now you see that we have all of our roaches, and this is another reason I use a clear one so that I can show you because I am an educator and that's my main purpose um, for doing this. You can see that there are a lot of roaches in here and they're trying to climb up the sides and guess what, they can't because it's slick. So that's one easy thing about breeding these roaches is unlike crickets, they can't um, escape very well. So that's one reason I like working with them. My coworkers like me to work with these instead of crickets as well because we don't want bugs all over the place. So I'm going to take our clean container and that's where our adult roaches are going to go. And then our baby roaches are going to go in another container um, so that we can feed with them. So I'm gonna pour these through here the babies will fall out, or this is actually just a trash can that I bought at the Dollar Tree, and I thought it would work great as a sifter. I also bought this online, and it's a dirt sifter, um, because if they're any bigger than this, I'm probably gonna want them to stay in my colony um, to replace those breeders that I do have. So, I am going to actually get another container to put these in, and then I'm going to sift them out into this. So hang on. All right, sorry about that. So I'm going to Take all of these, isn't that cool looking? I mean, it's kind of gross, but it's kind of cool too. There are a couple hanging on up there. Get down, guys. <laughs> what is he doing? All right, there we go. So now, check this out. I mean, it's kind of gross, but it's kind of cool too. I'm going to sift these through my Dollar Tree find here. The babies should fall out and the adults should stay in the basket. So you can see them falling out. It's kind of cool. But I am a science nerd. You can also see them climbing up the sides there. So I kind of need to shake it out and do this quickly. Some of them are crawling through as well. And then I'm going to put the adult and the medium. You can kind of see the medium size ones here too. I'm going to put those back in the colony. So that they can continue with their families and continue making babies. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna get the, um, the one that I shook off here. Some people just pick these up with their hands. You know, I'm just not that <clears throat> cool, I guess. So we're also going to put some more food in here for them. So I have some oranges that I cut up. I also have some carrots. Um, they also need moisture. So I have the water crystals. Some people use them, some people don't. Um, I just find it easier. One thing that I have found with the water crystals, though, is every few days I just add water to the bowl and it soaks it up. And so instead of making more water crystals, just keep adding water to the water crystals you already have and they'll last for a while. 
I've also found that if you put the water crystals in a separate dish, that that works out a whole lot better when it comes to cleanup time and replacing food and things like that. Um, it works a lot better for you. So I'm gonna do this because they're slowly crawling off on their own and I need to put their food right there in that empty space. Now I like the size of these dishes, so that's what I'm gonna use. I also like that I can put other dishes inside. So if I have something else that I want to take out and then replace, but keep some of the th same things in. The roaches can also crawl up the sides of these as well. Um, my daughter and I found these little dishes at Target for 99 cents. Um, these would work cool too because they have different um, separate compartments, but it doesn't quite fit into my tub like I thought it would. So I'm gonna continue to use these until we get a bigger tub. Now I'm gonna put these orange slices and carrots in here. If you have any food left over from your beardy, especially a baby, we don't seem to be able to um, feed him all the greens before they go bad. So I'll put greens in here too. And we also need dry food. Um, now I originally bought the roach food or roach chow um, from some of the distributors that offer that. Um, it is like a dry powdery food. Blakely, will you grab me the roach chow out of the closet? I have my daughter here to help. Um, but it's just a dry food and we use that um, to gut load them too, so I can put it in with my babies, I can put it in with my breeders. Um, there are tons of recipes online, so I'm actually, once this is gone, I'm gonna start making my own just because it's cheaper to do that. Um, and, and it's really easy to do that as well. Thank you, ma'am. This is Blakely, she's my helper. Um, but it'll come in a little bag like this, which doesn't seem like much, but it does last for a while. So I'll put some in. I don't want to put too much because um, I'll clean out this food and I don't want to waste it. So um, I can always add more. Now, you don't want to disturb the roaches too much though, um, especially since ours are in a clear container. I try not to open up that closet and disturb it. That's why I like to do these videos too, to show my students because um, I teach kindergarten through sixth grade and four classes of each of those grades. So that's over and over and over that I teach the same lessons. So if I'm doing something like this, I can't do this 28 times. I can do it once and then it's done. So if I video it, I can show it to them over and over and over. So let me see if I can coax these grown up roaches to get out of here. Um, but it's a pretty easy process, um, especially if you have the right tools and they don't cost a lot. So like this trash can or the sifter, not very expensive. And I just love to go to the dollar stores and Dollar Tree every once in a while and just look to see what they have because they always have um, dishes and things like that that you can use to feed with. And it's always nice to have extra um, just in case something kind of gets gross. Then it only costs you a dollar to replace it. So there we go. We have all of those guys out. Some of them are already eating their new yummy foods. I'm gonna put these little ones back in because that tends to be where my babies like to hang out, right by the food. And it also gives them a little bridge. Sometimes I will even put one of the egg crates kind of over the food bowl just so they have easy access to that food. I'll put my top back on. I have a temperature gauge that I measure the temps with. I just put it right in the living quarters so I can make sure that their temperature stays um, warm enough for them. Remember, they are tropical roaches. So um, I usually try to stay above 85 degrees, around 85, 90 degrees. Um, and it's easy to do in a closet. So um, I use heating pads and I use a chi to keep it that warm. I also store other bugs in the closet too. So we um, are in the process of breeding superworms as well. So I'll shoot that in another video. Um, but I keep all of those 
in the same closet. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys learned something today. Um, hello to all my students. We're on Christmas break and I miss you. Um, but I wanted you guys to see how many babies our families have produced. Um, we have lots of food for Falcor and for the fish and the turtles and things like that. Um, and we're going to put these guys back in the closet and they'll just keep making babies. And um, I'll bring some of these out to show you guys when we come back to school. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your Christmas break. And um, I hope everybody else out there learned something new. So, bye.